Now to talk about the latest loss for gangrene is Dan Hansis, host of the Heed the Call podcast, Rockland County native. Dan, before we get into this, I want you to remember mom and dad are watching here in New York tonight. Thanks for joining us. Oh, well, thank you for having me, Joe. And, you know, here I am, the home of Phil Rizzuto and Katie Tong and, you know, the Twilight Zone marathons. I grew up watching this channel. I just wish the circumstances were a little better, that we could be talking about happy Jets and Giants stories, but instead, well, alas. Yeah, it's been a long time since uh, Jets fans have been happy. We'll start with a simple question. It's a rough decade and a half now for gangrene. Is this, though, a new low? Well, th here's here's the thing. There have been a lot of lows over the last uh, 13 years without the playoffs. But I think what what makes this very kind of disturbing if you're a Jets fan is you've missed the playoffs every year and it's the longest drought of any team in the NFL. And there is this dread that you might be just now entering some level of the dark ages just because there's so much uncertainty both from ownership, where the owner's even going to be in a couple of months, the quarterback position, uh, obviously the coaching staff is heading for a total reboot, the general manager and all the machinery that goes behind that, behind the scenes with the scouting and development. Uh, the Jets are a complete question mark coming off what is, to me, uh, the most disappointing season in the history of the organization. All right, let's talk about that question at quarterback. Aaron Rodgers about to turn 41 in a few weeks, and he looks it, let's be honest. This team is going to have a new coach next Next year is Rodgers going to be a part of the future I'd be shocked if Aaron Rodgers is back uh, based on how this season has played out and what happened in Arizona kind of rubber stamps in a lot of ways to me that this season is lost that this team is not playing motivated and at a high level obviously for Jeff Ulbrich after they went ahead and dismissed Robert Sala so the question becomes Aaron Rodgers who I think has not been a bad quarterback for the Jets he's uh, it's kind of ironic so many bad years of Jets football in a row where quarterback issues are at the top of the list I wouldn't put Rodgers at the top of the list but he's now no longer a great quarterback but a, a good quarterback but he's surrounded by a poorly coached team and a top heavy roster so I think you know a lot of Jet fans went into the season thinking that this was a, a team that can make a run but pretty quickly it became apparent that the roster wasn't as good as we thought and Rodgers wasn't good enough at this point in his career uh, to lift them out of the haze. So it's been kind of a toxic stew, unfortunately. All right, but Rodgers was supposed to cover up all of those warts, right? We saw that last season when he went down. Now we bring in his guy, Devontae Adams. You get a left tackle aging in Tyron Smith. Is he just not good enough? Who gets the blame for that? Uh, yeah, I think... If you're asking Aaron Rodgers to be 35 years old again, it's not <laughs> Rodgers that should be blamed for that. It's it's the Jets who, who are asking him to be the version of himself that's a long way away, including coming off, obviously, last year's devastating Achilles injury. So, yeah, I think they made the moves, like uh, adding uh, Tyron Smith, like adding Mike Williams, who's already out of the picture, like bringing in Devontae Adams, which was felt like uh, three weeks too late when they made that move. Uh, it all made sense. This team is one of those teams that, that makes sense on paper but doesn't make any sense on the field and that goes back to general manager Joe Douglas who's going to be soon uh, out of a job and obviously Robert Sala who paid for it with his job and then I feel bad honestly for uh, Ulbrich who got promoted uh, you know in the fog of war here and has been totally overwhelmed by the job and you've seen he's continued on as the defensive coordinator in terms of calling plays and that's way too much to ask for a guy that's never coached it's just systemically the Jets are lost and everything starts at top with ownership and the decisions that have been made uh, leading up to this moment uh, murky moment in Jets history all right let's talk about Sala for a second here because does he get any vindication from the fact that things have gotten worse since he left we ran the graphic before the segment here the Jets defense giving up almost 26 points per game without him they were giving up 17 with him there and that was supposed to be the strong suit of this team yeah I would sh I'm sure Robert Sala there is a, a, a personal sense of satisfaction that the team didn't hit the gas pedal when he exited the pitcher in fact obviously they've gotten worse and uh, you know I don't know if that says a, more about Sala who I thought was a little overmatched as a head coach uh, it says more about the the rash decision making of Woody Johnson and I I know Aaron Rodgers uh, denied having any involvement in Sala's uh, departure but it didn't seem like they got along so well so I'll always have my curiosities about that so I, I think they put 
Ulrich, like I said, in, in a very bad situation and didn't have the coaching staff to handle getting rid of the head coach in the middle of the season. And remember, this is the same team that had Nathaniel Hackett, the worst offensive coordinator in football uh, by many metrics, entering the season. So you got him out of there, too. You promoted Todd Downing, who had failed in Tennessee in his prior stop. So you didn't have a strong coaching staff that you could turn to once you move Sal out of the building. So short-sighted decision-making by the team, and it, it should not be a surprise in retrospect that it went poorly all right three and seven playoffs still not completely out of the picture for this team and they have to play one of the teams in front of them next week in the Colts. are you holding out any hope joe. of a playoff run joe <laughs> joe we watched the game today joe they were going was... to the super bowl before the season started Yes, that it's amazing to think that's where we where our heads were at uh, in early September. But that today's effort was one of considering you know how they looked Thursday night against uh, against the Texans, and that you know we heard the talk about the Garrett Wilson catch saving the season. Yeah. To see the Jets show up or not show up the way they did in Arizona tells you everything you need to know both about where they're at as a team right now and how the rest of the season goes. It, it, you know, I, I hate to say this, and I, again, I'm on WPIX, the home of the scooter. Uh, I watch <laughs> Buffy the Vampire Slayer on this channel. This channel yeah. means a lot to me. To be on this channel talking about the darkness of the Jets hurts, but I just don't see a path forward where the season goes anywhere else but the Jets being in contention for the number one overall pick come April. All right, not to throw salt in the wound here, but uh, Mike Williams did score the game-winning touchdown for the Steelers today. Uh, Jets fans <laughs> had to know that was coming, right? Oh, yeah, I'm not a betting man, Joe, but uh, I could have sent my uh, two sons, Jack and Harry, through college <laughs> if I wanted to get aggressive there because, uh, yeah, just like Nicole Hardman scoring the game-winning touchdown in the Super Bowl last year after being a cast-off of the Jets, that's the kind of stuff that happens with this team. I don't know how it happened cosmically. People talk about, you know, Joe Namath uh, selling his soul to the devil <laughs> back in 69. I don't know if it's curses. I, I tend to think it's just organizational malfeasance more than anything else, but you can't make this stuff up. I feel for Jets fans as a Jets fan because even last Thursday night, um, uh, Halloween night, my kids are trick-or-treating, but I'm watching the game, and you see the passion yep. of the fans at MetLife Stadium. Like, Jets fans just want something to believe, and, and the organization has taken away hope, and that's the one thing a team and an organization can never do is take away hope, and that's where it feels right now, hopeless. And we didn't even get to Thanksgiving yet, 